going on guys we are back with another video and today i'm going to tell you guys what i just recently did to unit 95 like most of you guys know unit 95 was put out of service to bring in unit 75 so i've been using unit 75 already for a couple of months but in about two three months i'm gonna switch again put unit 75 out and bring unit 95 in and that's just so i can use both the trucks you know throughout the year maybe uh six months one six months the other one or just a couple of months this one then that one but i took the truck to alex's shop i don't know if i can tell but i did go lower in the front i removed uh i think an inch and a half block that it had truck was low also i had a small crack that i have seen when i changed my motor mounts right here where the leaf spring hanger goes now that hanger has two bolts at the bottom and then that one on top over here at the bottom there was a crack on the frame so that's the reason i took it to alex he double framed well you're not gonna be able to see but he double framed it pretty much from here all the way to the the bracket for the step so that's about a foot and a half two feet worth of um double framing on both sides so it could be the same so i did that but like i said as he was there i said hey man you think we could go lower on this thing now the bumper sits three inches from the ground once it's aired out like it is right now but from there i took it to freddy from the chrome stop when i got these stacks installed i told alex can you just uh on that bracket down here prep it up for a watermelon light so as you can see he did that for me but i never had the chance to put the watermelon on there so finally i got watermelons right here inside of the stack that's gonna look pretty good did that to both sides also got a 16 inch steering wheel now a little bit smaller i always wanted to do that so it looks pretty good sci now this switch here is for the underglow and i also installed the train horn this one's for the train horn now that switch is like a cruise control switch like i did on unit 75 so down city horn up train horn and also not sure if you remember those brackets i got from shift uh shift products so there's the watermelon lights on the bumper the bracket with the three watermelons you can see the watermelon on this side and we got the train horn back here so this is a grand general three horn supposed to be a little bit louder than the trucks i have a trucks on the other truck a four horn but i'll show you guys right now i want to see if there's a way that i can lower the column more if any of you guys know how i can do that let me know in the comment section below because i'm trying to drop it a little bit more maybe two three more inches so i can get a little more straight but also when i have time i want to unbolt the seat and move it back about four or five inches so i can have more room all i need is more leg room i'm too close to the pedals and that's really uncomfortable so i'm going to be doing that soon but here is the 18 inch steering wheel still in pretty good shape as you can see a little bit worn out on the sides right here but this is still a good steering wheel so i told him let me have the old box and i'm gonna go ahead and keep this one we'll see what i can put it on later on maybe if i get another truck or that fiber want to switch unit 75 steering wheel or whatever or if anybody's interested shoot me an offer maybe i'll i'll let it go like i said earlier i bought a cruise control switch like this one here set and resume and that's what i uh hooked up to the horns so city horn train horn so that's pretty cool if any of you guys want to do something like that 
that's a pretty good idea. And this switch here is pretty much for the underglow. So I was undecided if to go with amber or red, but I decided to go with red since I just have too much red going on on the back. You got six lights back here, and then you have a lot, nine, and then eight, four inch lights. A lot of red, so I was like, you know what, I'm just keep the underglow red. And this is just the beginning. I mean, maybe later on I'll add way more lights underneath it, but for now, I'm happy I just stuck out that right there. It's gonna look pretty good, hopefully running. And then the bumper right here. So this is a new style watermelon. It's not like this one. It has a, that effect, like a star effect where it has the lines like that. So we'll see how it looks at night. Hopefully that's enough for the bumper. Not too sure. You might not be able to really see it if it's just three. But if anything, later on we can just add more. And then obviously they're dual revs, so hit that corner switch back here. Top row, last switch. Got the purple. But there it is, unit 95. What do you guys think about those uh, little upgrades that were done to it? Let me know in the comment section below. I had told you guys I wanted to move my seat back, so that's what I'm doing right now. Took the battery cover off because I thought there was a nut I had to get from underneath the cab but it seems like there's some rivets there that you just pretty much have to put the bolt on so that's pretty cool one of them broke on me though the one that goes right here but everything else is coming out pretty smoothly I'm taking off the ones in the back right now where's my light show you guys not sure if you're gonna be able to see but taking off that one in the back right there this one and I got the one on the left corner to go but other than that I should be good I'm just gonna have to disconnect this airline that's right here disconnect that airline and which is this one right there There it is. All right, so I got the floor here somewhat cleaned. Now, obviously, I'm gonna be moving the seat back. So I have to measure, drill new holes. I might do like four inches back. And then do a, this one's too big, but something similar to that one over here. Or I could probably even keep that one. I'm not sure and reuse it. But anyways, um, I kind of have an idea because this is gonna be exposed these uh three four inches so i found an old cap plate i had on my dodge ram that i used to have in the front bumper i got pulled over took it off it's a little bit rusted i think it's gonna work perfect for what i'm trying to do black silver goes with the interior goes with the outside of the truck so i think i'm gonna use this instead plus i think it's gonna look better the reason why let me throw some measurements i'm gonna go four inches back so drill the holes here, bolt goes right there, so that means there's an inch and a half of the base that has to come forward. With that being said, four inches, inch and a half forward, the license plate's going to be visible from two and a half inches to this uh, start of it. So this one will go here, like that. right here 
four inches three and a half so the base of the seat is going to come right here it's going to be right here so the seat's going to start from right here backwards maybe about here so that's perfect because you're going to have this the cat license plate there it's going to be visible and i'll probably put a bolt the two, two bolts back here to kind of hold the license plate from the front and obviously the the other ones are going to be back here i'm going to hold it from the bottom but it's going to be visible i think it's going to look good if i do it that way so i think that's what i'm going to do i think it's going to look good all right so we got four inches Two and a half. Two and a half. Four inches. I got my drill here, drill bits, bolts, nuts that I'm gonna use. Got everything marked here, here, right here for that airline that comes from underneath, there, and there. So now it's time to start drilling. Got everything drilled. Got the four holes one, two, three, four, and then this one here for the airline. Didn't make it too big, but nice size. I don't know who did this one, but this one's huge. No need for all that. But that should work. Now I just have to drill holes on license plate. Drilled the holes on the license plate already. Two up top, two at the bottom. How did I measure it? I really didn't. I just kind of marked with a sharpie there. Here and here. Here. So I kind of just went this way down. Mark, mark. But it seemed like it worked. I didn't use a measuring tape. I don't have to be too accurate. It's not that hard to do anyways. But with that being said, let's uh, start putting the seat back on the cab. Front two bolts are installed already. All right, last one to go. 
Now, on these first two bolts, it was easy to put on. I put a um, high strength thread lock on, on the bolts. Now, the ones on the back, I can't really take those off because of how tight the space is. And by tight, I mean there's way more space here. It's lower over there, plus the bolts, they're not that close to the edge. They're more towards inside of the base. So that's what makes it harder. So I'm just putting dreadlock on the, on the nut right here. Hooked up all the airlines already. The one under there is good to go. And that's how the seat looks all the way back. As you can see, further back from the passenger side. It looks real good. So I was going to put one of the old bolts that came out from here. But luckily, I looked in my toolbox and I found two exact same ones that I can put there. What I'm going to do is just spray a little bit of black paint on there. I am completely done now. There you have it. Got the seat moved back. I'm not too worried about how the license plate looks, but go ahead and comment what do you guys think about it. I think that's way better than having those holes exposed anyways, but let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about it. What I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna do a time lapse cleaning up all the tools, and then I'm gonna put the camera once I sit on the seat so you guys can see my reaction because that's what I'm more concerned of is how comfortable and how back I'm gonna be sitting now four inches I'm sure it's gonna make a big difference but let's go ahead and do that time lapse cleaning up the tools All right guys, unit 95 is cleaned up. Clean the floors a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the sleeper, do the bed right after. I'm gonna set the camera on the other side so you guys can see when I sit on there and we can see how is the, the leg room on there. Moment of truth. Oh, it's a lot of room now. That's perfect. Now my knee is straight because before I was about maybe like this. Not sure if y'all can tell, but my knee was higher than my waist. So now Oh yeah, that's exactly what I needed. I wonder if I can reach the clutch. Yeah, I might have to lean forward to get the clutch, but that don't matter. Oh, this is perfect. Now I'm gonna be able to ride more comfortably. And I can still do my shifts. Oh yeah, nobody's gonna be able to look at me. Yeah, you definitely won't see me on the road if I'm leaning back like this. I'm pretty much right here where the unibuilt conversion is. 
My head's right here. So this is my view pretty much. My eyesight's right here. Can't really see much to be honest. But way more leg room for sure. I can stretch my legs almost all the way out. As y'all can see. What do you guys think about this? I think it came out alright. Let me know in the comment section below guys. What did you think about this little project? And also, let me know if any of you guys know how I can bring this column a little bit more down. On one of the previous videos, I took off that plastic that goes inside the spring. So I already dropped it two inches. But I want to go a little bit lower. Not sure if that's possible. Because if I'm going to be driving like this, I'm still going to have to kind of reach out here to grab the steering wheel or I'm gonna just have to drive like this that's not that bad but if I could drop a little bit more maybe grab it right here but that'll be it for unit 95 guys thank you for joining me on another video the video is not over if you want to stay I got a couple more minutes of video showing you guys a little bit of my 97 Chevy what I've done to it and what I want to do so stay to watch that if you want i want to show you guys my 97 chevy y'all seen it on a couple of uh, previous videos and i'm starting to work on it the 97 step side i have a 3.5 drop on there 15 by 10 ego alloys now this truck had a v6 and the motor had gone out so I was actually getting coolant on the oil. So I decided to just go ahead and put a V8 in there. Interior, pretty clean. I do want to convert these to uh, electric power windows and lock. So I'll do that later on. I got a buddy that does all of that. The dash is pretty good got this carpet cover double din radio OG floor mats took me a while to find these but I found them I redid the seat not too long ago 212s in the back and I also changed the steering wheel the other one was very worn out from up here so this one's in very good condition but yeah, like I said, I uh, got a V8 from a junkyard. So, slap the V8 in there. I even got the radiator brackets, bought a new radiator for it. I went to the junkyard, I found all these plastics. As you can see here, 5.7 liter. So I was pretty lucky to find this plastic here. It does have a spacer on the throttle body right there. Truck runs pretty good. It looks original. A lot of people told me, yeah, let's swap it, let's swap it. But the thing is, I wanted it to look just like an original 350. And that's exactly what I did. I mean, you look at it and it looks like the motor belongs in this truck. Like that's how it came from factory. Now, something I did a few weeks ago, I took it to a muffin shop. And I added a four inch tip right here in front of the back passenger wheel ran a three inch pipe all the way and i did a magna flow exhaust with no cats so i deleted the cats i went straight pipe but i did put a magna flow one in one out and it's not too loud it's perfect for what i like Sounds pretty good, nothing too crazy. I'll post a couple of clips here, uh, revving it so you guys can hear what it sounds like. There it is.
Now the story about this truck, I found this truck on Craigslist, I wanna say in 2016 or 2015, I think it was 2016. And the reason why I got this truck is because of the V6. Back in that time, I was delivering pizzas for Papa John's, so I was like, I need something that doesn't waste much gas, but also something cool that, that I like. So I'm not really a cars guy. I don't really like those four-cylinder Toyotas, Hondas, this and that. I'm more of a truck person. I've always been a truck person. So I found this truck. I said, man, I'm taking it. Now the plan for this truck is maybe in about two, three weeks, I want to take it to the paint shop gonna get it repainted completely i'm gonna do the same color i want to keep it original as i can and i'm gonna take these moldings off and see if i can find them new because these are pretty worn out after the paint i want to polish the 15 by 10s and maybe later on find some 17 by 11s but for now i want to polish these rock these for a while because i've been looking at the 17 by 11s they're pretty pricey but they look good they're good looking uh, rims i like the fact that it's more rim less higher this is old school it still looks good though but i want a little more wheel than tires I told the guy i want to cover up all of these little holes here do bed liner on the truck make it look nice or paint it i don't know what do you guys think should i paint the bed inside too or uh put some bed liner in there let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What about the exhaust? What do you guys think about the exhaust right there on the side? I think it's pretty cool. It's sporty. But yeah, like I said, this is a 3.5 drop. 3 inches in the front, 5 in the back. I already ordered the headlights from Amazon. I should be getting those this week. These are nasty looking. They're yellow. I'm going to take this uh, deflector off. And also buy a cow hood i want to put a cow hood but i'll take that to the paint shop once it's ready to go but there it is that's my 97 chevy and that's the story behind it why i bought it for how much i bought it <laughs>